Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas. I try to try about three new recipes a week, but I share everything that I made during the week to hopefully give you some motivation. You know, I don't always cook at home sometimes we eat out and sometimes the stuff that we eat is super duper simple even sometimes like cereal or just like grilled cheese and tomato soup but i hope that these videos can help you and if you like these kinds of videos i hope that you will subscribe down below we tried some super good recipes this week so let's go ahead and get into it so I started off Friday night with some sliders. I had these everything brioche rolls that I picked up at Aldi. I picked them up like two weeks ago and just threw them in the freezer because I knew I would want them to make sliders in the future. These don't come pre-cut so you do have to cut them down the middle. I only made part of this pack because then I saved some to make fresh later for my husband Andy when he got home from work later because sliders are just better. It's one of those foods that are just better freshly made and it literally takes not that long to put together when he got home later this evening. So I had my rolls cut in half. I put them on the bottom of the pan and then I started layering on some ham. This ham is either from Christmas or Thanksgiving and it was in the freezer and I've been needing to use it up. So I had taken that out and let it thaw in the fridge all day. So I'm just piling on a bunch of that and then I got some cheddar cheese on top of it. And then I put the top buns back on and then usually I would brush this with some butter and mix in like some everything seasoning. But since these rolls already had that everything seasoning on them, I just did some butter, some Dijon mustard, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and brush that over the top. And then I cover these with foil, stick them in the oven on 350 for about 30 minutes. <laughs> To go with our sliders, we just had some salad for those of us that like salad, and Lily just had some fresh veggies on the side. Sliders like this are so easy to put together, and it's definitely one of my favorite quick and easy meals. Saturday night was another just like super quick and easy family favorite, and that is spaghetti. I just cooked up a box of spaghetti noodles, cooked up some ground beef, added some marinara, topped everything with some parmesan cheese and then I also made a box of frozen garlic bread this is the kind that you can pick up at Dollar Tree it was really cheap at Dollar Tree too um it was two boxes for a dollar 25 um they had marked them down for some reason I'm not sure but it was really good I hadn't had this kind of garlic bread in a really long time I usually just make it myself Sunday night I tried a new recipe called cheeseburger gnocchi. I love pretty much anything that's like cheeseburger, like the cheeseburger helper, um, any kind of cheeseburger pasta. So I thought that this would be a hit. Let's just kind of change it up and do a gnocchi instead of pasta. So I'm starting off with some butter in a skillet. I'm going to get that melted and then I'm going to add in my 16 ounce package of gnocchi and just let that cook on the outside for a couple of minutes let it get like kind of golden and crispy on the outside and then i will remove the gnocchi and set it to the side um this gnocchi is actually another thing that i buy at dollar tree all the time it's a dollar 25 now it used to be a dollar but it's good um i've bought more expensive gnocchi before and it tastes the same to me so if you can find this at your dollar tree i definitely think it's a good buy mm -hmm. Once 
once I had the gnocchi removed from the pan, I added in a little bit of olive oil and then I added in some diced onion and some minced garlic and let that just cook for a few minutes until it starts to get tender. So I was looking at a recipe when I made this, but I did not follow the directions. Um, I just kind of made it my own, like this onion here. They wanted me to add it in later after the meat was cooked, but I prefer to cook my onion first. So I just kind of switched it up a little bit. I will have what I did listed out in the description box down below, but I will also link to the recipe that I based this off of. So once my onion had cooked for a little bit and started to get tender, I added in my pound of ground beef. That was another thing I changed. The original recipe only wanted half a pound, but I went ahead and just used the full pound. And then I also seasoned it up with some salt and pepper, some paprika, some cumin, a little bit of mustard powder. When my meat was finished cooking, there really wasn't a lot of grease, so I really didn't have anything to drain. So now I'm going to add in some mustard, some ketchup, and a little bit of pickle juice. If you've been here a while and you've seen me make other things that were like cheeseburger flavored, you probably could have guessed that I was going to do this. This was not in the original recipe, but I feel like adding a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of pickle juice, and a little bit of mustard really helps it give like it that cheeseburger flavor. So once I had that mixed in, then I went in with the other ingredients from the recipe, which were a 10 ounce can of diced Rotel tomatoes, a cup of beef broth, and then I added back in my gnocchi. And I made sure they were like pressed down into the liquid. And then I brought this to a boil. And once it came to a boil, I covered it, reduced it to like a medium low heat and let it simmer for about five minutes until my gnocchi were tender because before they were just like kind of cooked on the outside, but we want to get them tender all the way through. So after five minutes, this is what it looked like. A lot of that liquid was absorbed. The gnocchi was nice and tender. So I added in a fourth a cup of heavy cream and then I added in a cup of cheddar cheese. I did some mix throughout and then some of it sprinkled on top. The recipe wanted you to then put this in the oven under the broiler so that cheese on top could get like nice and golden and bubbly, but I didn't use an oven safe pan, so I just skipped that part. I just sprinkled it with the cheese and then some of the green parts of a green onion and then just put the lid on this and let it sit for a couple of minutes so that cheese could melt. This looks so good. I want to make it again. It was so good. Everybody loved it. There was no complaints from anyone. So definitely a winner. And it was really filling. Um, we really probably didn't even need like a salad and stuff on the side. But we all did have a salad and stuff on the side. Well, I say we all did. But as we know, those of us that like salad had salad and Lily had some fresh veggies. Monday night we tried another new recipe. These are some Chinese pork meatballs. I had some ground pork in the freezer because you may remember from a couple weeks or a month or so ago, I forgot to check what was going to be in my Good Chop box. And they sent me some ground pork and I don't really cook with ground pork a lot. So I was trying to find some new ways to use it up and I stumbled upon this Chinese barbecue pork meatball recipe on Pinterest and it turned out really really good. So here in this mixing bowl I am mixing together a pound of ground pork with a tablespoon of cornstarch. Um, the recipe called for some fresh minced ginger but I just did some ginger powder, some minced garlic, two teaspoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of five spice powder, two pinches of some ground white pepper and that is it. 
and then I'm just gonna mix this together I tried to mix it together with the little spatula but it, it didn't do so well you know you got to use your hands like pretty much all the time when you do meatballs so I mix it together really well and then I'm gonna roll these into one inch balls and it makes about 20 meatballs and now this recipe did want you to fry them in a wok in peanut oil but somebody in the comments on the recipe said that they had made them in the air fryer and I thought that sounded like a great idea because that's how I usually do like my regular meatballs so I rolled them into one inch balls and then got them on my air fryer basket and then I just cooked them like the same I cook my other meatballs which is on about 375 to 400 for about 15 minutes and sometimes I go in there and flip them halfway through. These I did not, they were so small. They cooked in I think about 12 minutes. But that's really gonna depend on your air fryer. Everybody's air fryer is different. Um, so I always recommend just paying close attention to something when you're making it for the first time in the air fryer, that way you don't overcook it. While my meatballs were in the air fryer, I started working on a little sauce to either dip them in or drizzle over the top of them. For that, I needed some green onions. I didn't need the white part for the sauce, but I like to put the white part in my fried rice, which I was also making. So I sliced up the white part to use for that. And then I just sliced up the green part to use for my sauce and for garnish on top of everything. Then in a small bowl, I mixed together three tablespoons of soy sauce. And then the recipe says to do three tablespoons of sweet soy sauce. Couldn't find that. I probably could have gone to like one of the Asian markets and found it. But someone in the comments on the recipe again asked if you could use hoisin sauce instead of soy sauce for that sweet soy sauce. And she said that was perfect. So that is what I use because I always have hoisin sauce on hand. And then I did two tablespoons of fish sauce. I've never used fish sauce before and somebody in the comments again, I always read the comments on recipes, um, but somebody in the comments again said that if you're not used to the flavor of fish sauce, it can be like kind of strong. So I just did two tablespoons instead of the three that it called for and then I did a teaspoon of rice vinegar and two tablespoons of sriracha and then a bunch of those green onions that I had chopped up and I just mixed that together really well and set it aside to use for our meatballs. As I mentioned I made some fried rice to go with this. I've shown my fried rice many times. I will have a video of that link down below. We love fried rice so much we're always trying to find different ways to eat it like make the protein part different and these meatballs were a win. I will definitely make them again. We loved them. The sauce was really good. I did the kids sauce on the side and I even found them dipping into it. They liked it a lot and I drizzled mine over the top and it was a little spicy. There might have been just a tad too much sriracha but it was really really good. Tuesday night I made some open face pizza burger kind of things and I started off by just browning up a pound of ground beef with some garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. And then once that was browned, I'm just gonna add in some marinara sauce. Now what I meant to do for this recipe was actually like double my meat back on the night that I made spaghetti, but I completely forgot that I was gonna be making this later in the week, so I didn't do that. But had I done that on the night that I made spaghetti, would have made dinner this night even quicker, um, but it's quick anyways because it takes like no time to brown some meat and add some marinara sauce. So once my meat was browned, I added in some pepperonis that I cut up. It was about half a cup of pepperonis. This is optional, you don't have to add it, but I thought it would give it some more like pizza-y taste. So I added that and then I added in about half of a jar of some marinara sauce and just let that heat up just a little bit. Now for our crust, I'm using some ciabatta sandwich rolls and I just cut them in half and I did the whole package and it ended up being like more food than we needed for dinner, but these reheated really well in the air fryer the next day for lunch. I wanted to do them on English muffins, but Aldi was out of English muffins. So if you could find English muffins, do that because usually they're cheaper than ciabatta rolls 
and it'll turn out just the same. So I got these on my sheet pan and then I brushed them with some of the Chef Chamois garlic butter and then I put these in the oven on 425 for five minutes so they could get a little bit toasty. After five minutes in the oven, I took them out and then I topped them with some of that meat sauce and then some cheese. I did cheddar cheese because I was like pretty much out of mozzarella, but you'll see after I add on the cheddar, I sprinkle each one with just a tiny bit of mozzarella. That was all that I had. And then these went back in the oven on 425 for about 10 minutes. These turned out great. Everyone loved them. I mean, who wouldn't love just a simple variation on pizza? We had it with a salad for those of us that like salad and Lily had some fresh veggies. And as I said, we had plenty of leftovers of this. I just reheated them in the air fryer the next day on the air fryer setting uh, on 300 for like five minutes and then they were nice and hot and they didn't get like too crispy or anything. Wednesday night we did some salads with chicken. So I've got two chicken breasts here in this bowl and I got some olive oil on there and then I just added a ton of different seasonings. I did some Tony's Creole seasoning, some onion salt, some garlic powder, some Badia Complete, and some of this Kinders or Kinders, I'm not sure how you say it, um, the lemon pepper seasoning that I bought recently and then I just got both of those chicken breasts coated really well with all of that seasoning and most of the time when I make like salads with chicken I will fry my chicken in the cast iron pan but this night I honestly did not feel like standing over the stove and cooking chicken so I put these in the air fryer on 375 for about 20 minutes flipping halfway through. I let my chicken rest for about five minutes before cutting it up and then we had like some salad toppings, some cranberries and glazed walnuts which were really good, croutons, carrots, hard-boiled eggs, cucumbers, a little bit of leftover bacon, we had our lettuce, tomato, cheese, parmesan cheese, um, and then most of us used the Olive Garden Italian dressing. Elijah wanted like everything on the side of his salad so he could build his salad himself. And then we all know Lily doesn't eat salad, so she just gets everything but the lettuce when we do a salad like this. Um, I tried to give her a piece of lettuce to try, but she did not want to try it. She just does not like lettuce. Thursday night, I did not feel like cooking. It was our martial arts night and I would have had to get dinner in the crock pot earlier in the morning and this morning I was just not feeling it. So I told Andy, I was like, I don't feel like cooking. We're gonna pick something for dinner on the way home and that is what we did. We picked Mexican. I had the flautas with rice and beans. Andy had a taco and an enchilada with rice and beans. Lily had a cheese quesadilla with rice and beans and Elijah had an enchilada with rice and beans. And then of course we had some chips and salsa and it was delicious. I had never had the flautas. They were with steak and they were really, really good. I would definitely eat that again. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys got some new meal ideas. If you did, let me know in the comments down below what you plan on trying. And if you were new here and you liked this video, I hope that you'll subscribe down below so you can come back and see my future videos. As I said, I share these every Sunday. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!